Greeting from Kabul, Afghanistan. Good afternoon to all of you, and thank you very much for including me on your program today. This year, we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Beijing to a, uh, Platform of Action, and also we are celebrating 20th anniversary of uh, Resolution 1325, a landmark resolution by the United Nations Security Council in order to include women in the peace process and conflict resolution. As we all know, men are the uh, initiator of the conflict, and they are the one who design and build the uh, weapons and bombs uh, in order to uh, get a financial benefit from the continuation of uh, conflict and, and uh, war in different countries. Uh, naturally, women are not uh, uh, involved on the making of the of the bombs and weapons, uh, and also they are not the main player in the in the conflict. Uh, that's why the men think that they are, since they are the main player on the conflict, so they are can be the main player on the peace process and peace building also. That's why they try to put uh, women uh, and isolate them and sideline them during the, uh, the peace building also. But history shows that uh, um, when there's a, a lack of women involvement or lack of women participation in the peace building, that peace will not be sustainable and that uh, peace will not be durable. And also it showed that the durability and sustainability of, uh, of a peace process uh, is guaranteed with the women inclusion on the peace process. In my country, in Afghanistan, since 42 years uh, we are in conflict, different players and different political uh, groups came in power and gone. Uh, unfortunately, most of them uh, violate the human rights of people, and particularly the human rights of women uh, in Afghanistan. We know, we heard about Taliban and uh, Taliban treatment of women. Uh, practically, Afghanistan was the biggest pre uh, prison uh, for women uh, in, the, in the last century. Uh, but we had a different peace processes, but women were not involved, and that's why we uh, didn't achieve peace in Afghanistan. So I think uh, one of the issues that we have to push for women inclusion as a victim of the war and also as a half of the population that we cannot deny it uh, as in the peace process, because we cannot make peace with half of the population, which are men. Uh, and also, if we do not uh, and the violence against women in the family and the in the domestic violence and ending the culture of impunity for sexual gender based violence we cannot achieve peace uh, sustainable peace in the world so i think uh, uh, we need to push for women's recognition and women's role uh, and inclusion in the peace process and women should be included in the peace process and they should be supported as well as you all know that we have an intra-Afghan dialogue in, in Doha uh, going on, although we don't have a lot of uh, women uh, as a member of negotiating team. It's only four women from the Afghan government side. It's uh, uh, out of uh, 42 people, it's only four women. But the rest of women in the country, we are trying to support our sisters in the negotiation team in order to uh, give them a, a stronger position in the negotiation uh, table. So what we, I would say that the end of the war is not a peace. So for a sustainable peace, we need to have a, to respect for human rights and respect for women's rights and include women as half of the population. If there's no women in the peace process uh, the, and no respect for human rights, inequality for men and women, that will not be, be peace. That will be a short-term political uh, deal, and that will not bring peace to the people. Peace means that uh, women uh, and people should have uh, human security, and they uh, should live with dignity. Uh, and I would like to call on our sisters to stand by Afghan women uh, in order to uh, preserve their, their basic human rights and their dignity in the peace process in Afghanistan. Thank you.